All right, now let's turn to return to, I should say, because we've been talking about a lot. One of today's biggest stories, China's second credit tightening in a month, which roiled markets earlier today. Joining us now is Nicholas Consonary. He's an Asian specialist at the Eurasia Group, a consulting firm focused on global political and economic risks. He visited China last month. Uh, Nicholas, thanks for joining us. Let me ask you, first of all, to weigh in on, on kind of the argument that markets have been having with our guests today, and that is uh, that this is actually a good move. You know, most of our guests have said this is a good and bold move it shows that China is uh, taking care putting their house in order and we don't have to worry as much about bubbles popping up well hi Matt it's uh, it's good to be back with you this afternoon uh, you know I think I, I tend towards the argument that this is a positive move uh, I think you know the leadership in Beijing clearly recognizes that they've got some serious problems ahead uh, in terms of inflation especially in terms of property price growth which I think is becoming a real concern in China um, and so you're seeing a little bit of a more aggressive stance uh, from the central bank as, as a result. Um, but, but I'm not, I, I wouldn't say it's 100 percent positive. And the reason for that is because I think overall it's very clear uh, that the leadership is actually keeping a lot of the sort of accommodative, preferential, monetary and fiscal policies in place. And there's a lot of room for the, the Chinese economy to grow and expand and, and potentially experience some bubbles here in the next year or two. I mean, that's the point. It's not like we're talking that Chinese growth is going to go down at 1% or 2%. I mean, there's still dramatic growth, even as they, they rein in lending and, and take other initiatives to slow, uh, to slow growth here. Yeah, that's right. And actually, the, one of the leading Chinese think tanks, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, came out two days ago and forecast 10 percent growth for China in 2010. So Staggering. the expectation in Beijing is still that it's going to be very, very high growth for, for this year. Hey, let me ask you about uh, where you see these bubbles popping up. I mean, wh where are the biggest concerns? Is, is real estate one of the biggest concerns? Uh, I think real estate is the preeminent concern in terms of bubble in the China market right now. Um, and, you know, I think the real risk is it's actually a policy risk. I mean, in 2007, 2008, China did have a property bubble, and the leadership recognized that, and they took a really aggressive monetary policy stance uh, in response to that to try to pop the bubble. And that precipitated an economic slowdown in China that really started before the financial crisis. Uh, so I think that's the big risk here, is if, if the leadership does really get aggressive, then you could see a much slower growth picture uh, because, again, the policies, they, there's a potential for some significant tightening there, I think. Um, Nicholas, let me also ask you, though, about the political tensions. We have China urging the U.S. to cancel uh, the president's visit with the Dalai Lama. That's supposed to happen next week. The White House is rejecting that idea. Where do political tensions play into this? Are they increasing, in your view, between the United States and China? I think there's no question that the, uh, the U.S.-China relationship is getting much more tense this year. Um, on a host of issues, on economic issues and political issues, like the Dalai Lama visit that you mentioned, and also the Taiwan arms sale, which uh, you saw, you know, two weeks ago, Beijing came out and announced sanction potential for sanctions on U.S. companies for the first time in history as a result of a Taiwan arms sale. So this is, yeah, this is a big story, I think. The question, though, is whether or not this is going to have a big impact on the Chinese economy this year. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm inclined to say that it's probably not going to. I mean, there, you know, I think the trade war scenario, the really big downside scenario, is something that the administration in the U.S. and the Hu Jintao administration in China desperately wants to avoid because of the downside economic ramifications. And things don't seem quite as heated there anymore as far as the trade war uh, concerns. Exactly. I think, I think you know, bo again, both administrations really want to avoid that scenario. And I think that's, you know, they, there's no question that China feels really strongly about the Dalai, Dalai Lama visit, right. about the Taiwan mm -hmm. arms sale issue. But I think they're trying to tamp it down a bit. Nicholas, got about 15 seconds here. I mean, has the relationship, relationship changed enough that one has the upper hand, in your view, or no? It, they, it's, it's, they both, both the United States and China still need each other a lot. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's no question that... The financial crisis made very clear that China is extremely reliant on U.S. consumption and the global economy, and the government's trying to deal with that now. And that's why you're seeing these, these downside risks to the Chinese economy that we're seeing play out now. It's because of Beijing's stimulus response. All right. Hey, Nicholas, thanks for joining us. Nicholas Katsanari there of the Eurasia Group.